In a world where technology improves every second, I meet a group of people who believe that technology and humanity should combine. We can do more than what we're currently capable of. I speak to those at the beginnings of their journey. That I am slowly turning myself into a part machine. And those who have taken their evolution into their own hands. Oh, the thing in her arm was very scary. But I do think it's also quite frightening. This is my journey into the world of transhumanism. My journey started when I decided to look into the world of transhumanism. I was given access to a forum and I was shocked to find people upgrading themselves from home using equipment that they bought from various websites. One of the websites, Dangerous Things, came with this warning attached to its products. These kits definitely contain dangerous things. While the transponder devices contained within the Cyborg Transformation Kit have undergone several quality checks during manufacturing and have been put through a battery of tests with various private labs, they have not been tested or certified by any government regulatory agency for implantation or use inside the human body. Use of these devices is strictly at your own risk. I wondered if there was anyone who does implement these devices for people. The most popular and most well known by far is a girl called Genova Rain. Genova Rain is a transhumanist, a biohacker, and she says she does five of these a week, but that number is rising rapidly. She's definitely someone that we should be going to speak to. We arrived in Leicester. We came to meet Stephen, who was on his way to get chipped by Genova Rain. All right, you got here then. Yeah, finally. Good to meet you. Nice to see you. How are you? Not bad. How are you? You're good. How was your trip? Um, it was alright. Thanks. Very long. Thanks for coming and meeting us. I appreciate it. What have you come for? I've come to get a microchip implanted into my hand. And why? Well, there's lots of reasons why. Um, the, the main reason, I guess, is to evolve with the world. Yeah. To, talk to me about transhumanism. Um, I like the idea of transhumanism because um, transhumanism is the idea that you can evolve and you can engineer your way into the future, I guess. You know, if, if I want to develop my own tech, then why not develop my own tech that can respond to my biology? What's this going to do that you're getting done today? Log me into my computer, um, open locks for me, uh, open my front door, uh, I can open my car and things like that. Um, hopefully in the future I'll be able to pay for things. I wouldn't see it as me trying to make myself better. I don't mind being biological, you know, but um, if I can be part mechanical, I just think that's so, so much more awesome. You know, look at look how many people die of horrific disease every year and yet they pray every day. Mm. It is, it's just no use. You know, but we have created medicine. We can engineer our way out of our problems. You're quite passionate about that. Extremely passionate, absolutely. You're quite passionate about this, aren't you? Yeah. So is this the beginning for you of, is today like your technological baptism? <laughs> that is a fantastic way to put it. Yes, <laughs> yes, this is like the step that I can take. Into? The future. Stephen's views in upgrading himself were intriguing, and the time had come for him to get his first chip implanted by Genova Rain. Time to get chipped. She yeah. did all of her right. procedures from a small studio above a post office. This is, this is how we are making ourselves human plus, is what we call it. We're better than being human. We're, we're advancing ourselves to have more than what we were born with, more than what we were given with. We can do more than what we're currently capable of. Just relax your breathing. Take a nice big breath in. Amazing. Cool, that is one. Did you feel much of that? I did feel that. Um, 
It's a fair little pinch there. Okay, so you did not react at all. No, no. <laughs> Amazing. It wasn't so bad. Before I was a transhumanist in theory, but now I'm a transhumanist in practice. Mm. I really have done it now, taken that first step. More people came to get checked throughout the day, one of whom was Winter. Her reasons for believing in transhumanism were more out of necessity than desire. Well, the first uh, cyber enhancements I had weren't voluntary. They were through the hospital because I was in a very bad car accident that fractured my back in multiple places, both my ankles and both my knees. I have in my left hand an RFID chip, that's my door key. In my right hand, I have an NFC chip that is my business card. In the middle of my right finger, I have a magnet that lets me sense EM fields. I have the contraceptive implant, a 3D printed kneecap, and now two LED implants. If I travel, um, I have a near autoimmune disease, so I am allergic to the world and everything in it. You know, fruit, veg, grass, pollen. Somebody sneezes in China, I'm gonna get sick. Like, it's, I have the worst immune system. And I've had a lot of medical procedures. It's just proactive versus reactive. Mm -hmm. Instead of waiting until I'm hurt, and then getting something medically done to me. I can do something that stops me from getting hurt in the first place. Say I'm surfing off the coast of Spain, and I trip and fall and smack my head in the water, and I'm knocked out. While the paramedics can get me, I could be completely knocked out and unconscious. They don't know anything about me. They don't know my name. They don't know my blood type. None of that. Well, I've got a medical ID bracelet that I wear that says Medical Implant NFC Scan Finger Webbing. They can tap my hand then to that, and it'll pop up with a web page I've made that has all of my medical history and my doctor's name, if they need to talk to it. So say I go coma, it's also got a link to my will on there. You know, it's got everything in there. So I'm not, oh, Jane Doe in some hospital. It has all of this stuff. After a busy day of chipping her clients, I finally had the chance to catch up with Genova Rain. What chips do you have? Literally none. You've got none? How well, controversial is that? That's very interesting. <laughs> is it not? Why? I kind of kept it that way to make it interesting. <laughs> There's so... The functionality that we have right now, it's for passwords and keys and starting your car and uh, entry into your house or entry into your workplace. My workplace is here. We can't fit an RFID locked downstairs. I know, but it's quite interesting that you're pr you, you are promoting it yes. in a manner, yeah. yet you don't have them yourself. For me, totally useless. So we've worked out you're the chipper and not the chippy. Then. I'm the biohacker and not the biohacky. That's the one, yeah, yeah. But do you think there needs to be more regulation for this? Definitely, yes. As far as I know, there's currently very little specific uh, bylaws for this at all. For example, if you're, um, if you read through any of the tattoo and piercing bylaws online, they are talking about sharps, they're talking about waste disposal, all of which is exactly relevant to this, but at no point in that is the term biohacking actually specifically mentioned? So I would imagine at some point there'll be an update to that specific legislation simply just to include that term because everything else for this is already rele relevant for piercing, tattooing, needles, waste disposal. Is, is there more and more people now kind of... Oh. oh, definitely, definitely. I started this about seven or eight years ago. Um, it was just basic microchips back then. Not a huge amount of functionality, but it was more for people who just wanted to be bit cool, bit original, yeah. have something different. Um, now that there is more functionality, definitely seen an increase. And I do have to definitely give my respect for, for anyone that has done this on themselves, especially in the lead up to where we are now, because they were the pioneers. And without people having any interest in doing this on themselves in the first place, I probably wouldn't have this as my job right now at all. But doctors would shoot you down for that. Yes. And quite rightly, some would say. I guess so, yes. Who's the greatest person then that's done that? Probably the most well-known person for having uh, experimented on themselves is the uh, left anonym, for sure. We travelled to Birmingham to meet biohacking cult hero Left Anonym. Left started off experimenting with smaller items such as chips in her hands, but has become a human test subject. She currently has a huge data storage prototype device in her arm. Sounds a lot more painful than it actually is. Yeah, but is. I mean, a lot of people don't have drawers full of this in no, their not. house. Like, my mum had like a celebration box that was actually medicine supplies. Yeah, yeah. But this is a drawer full of. This is a drawer full of actual. Oh, this is lidocaine. Well, actually, this is xylocaine, but it, it's it's anaesthetic. And they're like, this is liquid gold as far as I'm concerned because this was almost impossible to get in the UK for a long time. 
and it, a, a big old vial of it like that is enough for a huge procedure. Like that's 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 all I'll need for a long time. Where did you get that from? Uh, uh, various places. <laughs> Are you allowed that? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Probably not, if but... If you don't feel comfortable on that answer your question, you don't have to. Uh, yeah, I, I probably shouldn't say where I got it from, but it is useful to have it. So, the, the first time I ever did an operation in, in 2006, it did get super infected. And I'm just a widow that does experiments by themselves. Yeah, but you say that, but you're someone who's um, kind of encouraged a lot of other people. I, I hope so, yeah. Like, like I said, when I started... Some people might was... say that's not a good thing. Some people might, some people might not. I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure myself whether it's a good thing or not. But I, as far as I'm concerned, knowledge should be spread to as many people as possible. Like I, I, I believe in information freedom, and, and I also believe in bodily autonomy. I, I believe that everyone has the right to try and do whatever they want with their own body, so long as it harms no one else. Do you ever feel like maybe because you're so willing to go through with stuff on yourself, you might be taken advantage of a little bit? I don't think so. Like in, in general, we're all very. Uh, what's the word, cooperative. Mm -hmm. So everyone more or less knows what everyone else is doing. Everyone sort of tends to work together. So like, I, I don't feel like there would be anyone in the community that would take advantage. Does, does that make sense? Left's boyfriend Paul was also present. He and Left became an item whilst he was making a documentary about her. But what did he think about Left's biohacking ways and how concerned was he when it came to Left's experiments? Can I, do you ever worry? Yeah. yeah, there's always going to be risks involved uh, and generally I'm okay with it because a lot of the time sometimes I'm there and I can, she's with uh, biohackers who have medical knowledge and there is safety in place. It's never a case of, okay people let's turn this into a party, scalpels out, everyone hack away. Oh, the thing in her arm was very scary. Do you ever worry as a day it will go too far? Of course. Uh, and, and I have said, you know, you've got to be careful with this stuff. And when I do hear about the next big project, I think, how can that go bad? It is an amateur scene, but there is science and medicine behind it. Not everyone thinks like the biohacking enthusiasts. Back in Glasgow, Dr. Mary Ford Neal, an expert in medical ethics, says the bodily autonomy that Left spoke about has always been limited by the state and she had concerns after seeing our film. The idea of, of people doing it to themselves is, is something that scares me because it is invasive. Some of the procedures seem to be more invasive than others, but all of them involve an intrusion on the human body um, and that's something that should probably always be done by someone with expertise um, and the ability to deal with any complications that arise. Uh, so I think the, the the fears that I would have around this kind of individual level um, biohacking practice would be safety concerns um, rather than ethical concerns, although were it to become widespread, where it to become mainstream, um, I think I would, I would have deeper ethical concerns about that too. A journey that started as an idea had turned into an eye-opening experience. My time with the transhumanists had come to a close. Whether out of desire or necessity, they had opened my eyes to a world that I previously believed was a myth. But many questions remain unanswered about this unregulated practice. And as technology continues to develop, just how connected will we become to it?